So now I've got a reconciliation problem to do. I need to, I've got uh, a difference between my bank balance and my books balance. So uh, here's where I start. Um, on June 30, the books balance of the checking account of West Wing de delivery was $6,062. This is the books balance. Uh, in a real world setting, I get this number here from whatever is in, say, my cash account, whatever account is coordinated with the bank account. And the number here is $6,672. So I'm going to put this number right here. And then second sentence. However, the ending balance on the bank statement was $8,466. Now I notice right away this is a big difference here. That's almost $2,000 off. But I'm not really worried about the dollar amount. What I'm worried about is the fact that it's different. It's not the same. And so I need to find all the possible things that might explain that difference. So here's the first item on the reconciliation problem. First of all, I'd have to go through, I'd have to look at my bank statement, and I'd have to look at my book's information to find this, this information here. First, there's a deposit in transit of $1,500. And to do these problems, what I'm going to need to think about is who knows about this already and who still needs to know about this here. Does the bank know about this um, or do my, my books know about this already and the other one doesn't? And then I'll need to think, do I need to add or subtract it? Uh, deposits in transit mean that I've maybe put it in the mail to the bank or maybe I've given it to the bank but they haven't actually had a chance to record it on the books just yet, even though I've recorded it on my books already. So they haven't put it in at the bank on the bank, bank statement yet, but I have it on my books. I'm going to have to add this to the bank balance because this is eventually going to go through on the bank balance. It'll, it'll work itself out, this particular difference. So I'm going to log it here. $1,500. Um, so I've got that one. Next, there's a bank service charge of $40. This, this one here, the bank charged me $40. Bucks. Um, this is something that the bank already knows about. This should be on the bank statement already. And I, of course, I want to go through and verify, yep, there's the $40 bucks on the bank statement. And in fact, that's probably where I'd hear about it from. Um, however, on my books, I've, uh, I'm going to have to deduct this to my books balance. Because this is going to make, make my books balance go down. Put that there. All right. So next, there were three checks outstanding at the time of the bank statement. Check 122, check 123, and check 125. With these checks here, uh, it's it's important for me to keep track of these check numbers because that's one way I can verify that my bank balance or my book balance is working. Uh, I can go through and I can see well which checks have been deposited in the bank and which checks haven't. And of course what's going on here is that I've written a check to somebody else. My check 122 I've written to maybe one of my suppliers and they have not yet taken it to the bank and cashed it just yet. So I know on my books that eventually my, my bank balance is going to go down by $360. I've already taken it out of my book balance, but the bank hasn't taken it out yet because it's not been cashed. So I'm going to log this and the other three checks on my bank statement. So here we are. There's the first check. the second check. All right. There, next I have, so, so this one here is done. Next I have, the bank had collected a notes payable for West Wing of $2,080, but it charged West Wing a collection fee of $10. So what's going on here is that uh, somebody owed me money, and uh, the bank was trying to collect it for me. They were trying to get that money, um, and now they've finally collected it. So this is something where the bank knows about this $2,080 already, but I haven't logged it on my books yet. 
So I'm going to need to do that. Um, and I'm not going to put $2,080 on here because of this collection fee here. Yes, the bank got my money, but the bank also took out $10 um, for having collected it for me. So this is actually going to be $2,070. I'm going to make a note here. Um, collection fee of $10. Then last but not least, West Wing forgot to record on its books the purchase of supplies for $180. Again, this is something I would have purchased this through the bank, but my books balance doesn't know about it yet because I forgot to put it on there. So now I'm going to put it on my books. This is going to make my books balance go down. So now I've come to the end of the problem and I've recorded everything. And so now I'm going to want to do the major math here. And of course, if I were working on a real problem, it might not have everything this neatly laid out for me. I might have to add up my bank reconciliation and see if it balances. And if it doesn't, I'd have to think about, well, why exactly that is. So for now, though, I'm going to go ahead and do the math here. This one, um, to subtotal these items is really easy since there's only one, 1,500. Uh, here, I'm going to need to subtotal these items. Three sixty four eighty two five sixty two fourteen oh four. Then on the other side, another easy subtotal, and then I'll have to add these up here. And then I'm going to go do the major math here. Major math in these columns. Eighty four sixty six. There's my bank balance. Add in what I'm supposed to add and deduct what I'm supposed to deduct. There's my reconciled bank balance. We'll see if the other side works here. works on the other side as well. And so now I have uh, done a complete bank reconciliation. I've got my books balance, I've got my bank balance, and everything in the reconciled balance, everything works. Now there's one thing left that I need to do. Next, I need to record all this information in my general journal. And of course I'll have to post it to the ledger, etc. later on, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and record this in my general journal in the next video.